the Sony PlayStation and backwards compatibility were once lovers intertwined in a deep relationship. But what went wrong? Well, that's what we're talking about today. As we, together, as a people, take it out. Welcome to another Sensational Sunday. I'm Mike, and this week we're talking all about the PlayStation. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, it came out recently that Sony might discontinue the online stores for the PSP, PlayStation Vita, and the PS3. And that's kind of a big deal. That means you won't be able to make any more digital purchases from those stores if you have one of those systems. Now, this is gonna impact the system like the PSP Go the most, where you can only buy digital games. So if you still have a PSP Go, you might wanna go ahead and rack up while you still can. None of this has been made official by Sony yet, so it's all just speculation, but the rumor is it's gonna be around summer when all of these services are gonna be discontinued. Now, the PSP came out in 2005, so you know, it's almost 16 years old. The PS3 came out in 2006, so that's around the same as almost 15 years old. The Vita is the newest one out of the bunch that came out in 2011, so that's almost 10 years old, and it kind of flopped, but the support ended a lot more recently for it. Like, they officially discontinued it shortly after the Nintendo Switch came out, so that may be a tougher pill to swallow if you do have a Vita, just because it was more recently discontinued than the other two. The reason I mentioned backwards compatibility earlier is because there really needs to be a way forward for these games, especially the PS3. Now, the Xbox 360 and PS3 era was significant in kind of normalizing digital purchases. I mean, the PS2 and the Xbox really didn't have many options as far as buying things digitally. But when we came into that generation with the PS3 and the Xbox 360, that was when both platforms had their own stores and you could buy games digitally. And of course, with PS4 and Xbox One, we saw that really take off. So with them ending the ability to buy games, it's not like oh, you can't download your games anymore. But in the future, if they just decide, like, we're going to shut down the servers altogether like Nintendo did with the Wii, then you won't be able to re-download games at all. Like, if you lose that system, you lose those games, and you might even lose the ability to play the games. IGN had a really good article about this potentially being an issue with the PS3 because apparently if the CMOS battery dies, if you're not familiar with the CMOS batteries, basically every computer has, like, a watch battery. Not really a watch battery. That's what I always called them growing up. But, you know, one of the little flat batteries on the motherboard and that controls things like the time. It basically controls the memory for the motherboard, like, you know, time settings and all that stuff. So the system and the computer will still work without that. But, like, things like the time might be wrong because it's not saving that anymore because the battery powers that memory module that keeps that information. So if the CMOS battery dies in the PS3, you lose access to your digital games until you replace it and it re-authenticates with Sony's server and then you get access back. The issue is if they do shut down their servers, if you have this scenario, which will eventually happen to all PS3s, then you won't be able to re-authenticate with the server if there's no server there, which would basically lock you out of all PS3 games. And apparently the PS4 is even worse because they just lock you out of all games in general, including disc-based games, which that makes sense because this last generation, even if you bought a disc, you still were downloading the game. So it's not like buying physical media really mattered as much this generation. So yeah, if the PS4 or CMOS battery dies, and let's say if the servers were gone, then you wouldn't be able to access any games. Not that it matters, because there's just a lot of games that aren't really playable in the state that they ship in on the disc. So even if you were able to play a game offline, like a disc-based game, and you installed it from the disc, that version that you're playing, like the original version without the day one patch or any patches is probably gonna be terrible. You could be completely stuck as far as your digital purchases, they completely shut down the server. So right now the rumor is they're just basically turning off the store, not really shutting off the server completely. But if that does happen in the future, there needs to be a way out. There needs to be a way for people to still enjoy these games and for them not to be lost to time. Which is why there's another rumor that's going around that Sony might be working on backwards compatibility with PS3, PS2, and PS1 games. This is based off a patent that was filed last year. Basically, the patent refers to adding trophy support for emulated games. And of course, if they were doing PS3 to PS1 backward compatibility, the games would most likely be emulated because I'm pretty sure the PS5 doesn't have the hardware to run those games natively. So that's why people are thinking that this might be a hint of backwards compatibility. And at this point, I think Sony has to do backwards compatibility. Like, there's no other option. If they're really gonna shut down these PS3 servers, 
there needs to be a way forward for those people, even if it's not the way that people want. Like, even if they don't want to have to buy a new system, at least there would be a way for it in order to continue enjoying those games. Right now, if they completely shut down the PS3 servers, then a lot of games would be lost. And even if you had the disc, if you didn't have patches installed, then you would just never be able to play the proper version of those games. Sony's really in a position where they have to do something. The other part of this I really want to explore is Sony's whole stance on backwards compatibility and why they've been kind of against it. So I found another article, it was really interesting. It was kind of talking about how Sony really popularized backwards compatibility with the PS2, because when the PS2 came out, not only were the controllers, like if you had a DualShock that was forward compatible, even the regular controller technically was for PlayStation games, but you can play PlayStation games, use the same controllers. Like it was a no brainer to upgrade to the PS2 because you could still play all your PS1 games, even use the same controllers with it. The last thing I really want to explore is Sony's overall problem with backwards compatibility. Why I think that they haven't done it up until this point, aside from the PS5 having PS4 backwards compatibility, but any of the older systems. And I think it all started with the PS3. They really got burned with the PS3 and I think that that's made them not want to do it anymore. And what I mean is the PS3, and I remember this because I was a teenager, I was like 17 when the PS3 came out. It was a system that everybody was like, it's not worth buying. It was $100 more expensive than the most expensive Xbox 360. It was $600. On top of that, it didn't have any compelling games at launch, but a large part of the reason that it was expensive was because they put a Blu-ray drive in there because Blu-ray was a new format at that time. Te technically, the PS3 was like the cheapest Blu-ray player you could buy, which is says a lot, that's how new it was. They tried to do the same thing that they did with the PS2 and DVD and really popularize it. That cost a lot of money, but also they put hardware in there for backwards compatibility. And the Blu-ray thing was smart. Like all discs moved to Blu-ray for gaming. So, you know, Xbox One also did Blu-rays the following generation. So it's really not like, the Blu-ray killed them or anything. It was more so them adding in a Blu-ray player, which was expensive, and then also adding in the hardware to play PS1 and PS2 games because they actually had to add the hardware in order to play them. They weren't doing emulation. That's what made the PS3 $600. Now, Sony's later version of the PS3 that was cheaper removed that ability, but it allowed them to catch up because they were able to make it cheaper and make it competitive. And by the end of the generation, they ended up being pretty close to the Xbox 360 as far as sales after they ditched the backwards compatibility because obviously they weren't gonna ditch the Blu-ray drive. All their physical games, at least, were based on having these large Blu-ray discs in order to hold the data. So they weren't gonna go back on the Blu-ray thing. So they got rid of backwards compatibility and they were successful after that. And I think in Sony's mind that read like, oh, well, we take our backwards compatibility and they didn't care and they bought the system after that. When that was never the thing. The thing was the system was just overpriced in general. And I understand that they were selling it at a loss after they did that discount, but it wasn't the backwards compatibility that people didn't want. I think people still wanted that, but they're more willing to go buy a PS3 if it was cheaper. I think having the backwards compatibility probably could have sold more systems or a lot of people that had PS2. But yeah, I understand in that instance that they needed to get rid of something to make the system cheaper. They chose to remove the hardware in order to do backwards compatibility and that seemed to work out for them. And then during the PS4 era, there was no backwards compatibility with the PS3 because the PS3 used this complicated cell processor that they came up with that apparently nobody could develop for. That was another issue with the PS3. The PS3 was a whole mess. I love the system, but it was a whole entire mess within itself. So I think that the PS3 just would have been too complicated. They would have had to put that processor in there. So I think their whole strategy going into the generation after the PS3 is they needed to be competitive as far as price with Microsoft. During the PS3 era, they really built out some really good exclusives like Uncharted, they had Jack and Dexter. They had a lot of games. I mean, I miss Resistance. That was one of my games for that generation. But they had a lot of good games. They kind of reestablished themselves and rebuilt their core franchises and they were really strong going into the next generation. And I think they really wanted to focus on price. So there was no way that they were gonna put the hardware in there to do PS3 emulation because like I said, that cell processor was real complicated. Like apparently everybody hated it. People, developers hated it. I'm sure Sony hates it. Everybody hated it. Churches. Mothers, kids, everyone. So that brings us to last generation. Well, what is now last generation? The, the PS4 slash Xbox One era. And Sony was very successful. Like Sony basically beat the bricks off of Microsoft as far as console sales. I mean, a lot of it was because Microsoft messed up and sabotaged themselves before the generation even started, but that's a whole different story. But yes, 
Sony beat the brakes off of Microsoft last generation and they did it without mentioning backwards compatibility. But towards the later part of the generation, Microsoft started working on backwards compatibility and it became a question again. And Sony kind of reacted to it, but like no one cares about backwards compatibility because the way they look at it is they didn't start selling PS3s until they removed that feature. They brought PS4 forward without having any backwards compatibility at all with even the PS3 and nobody cared and they sold millions and millions of systems. So that's why they haven't cared about it up until this point. I think going into this new generation with the PS5, where they knew it was gonna be a slower transition because you know, a PS5 is still very similar to a PS4. The graphics are a little bit better, but there was no way that they could just dump all these fans and be like, you know, you have to buy all new games for the system. You can't play your old games. It wasn't gonna work, especially with digital purchases being more important this last generation than ever. You just can't have people buy a bunch of stuff and have the loss of that platform. So they had to do it with PS4. Like they had to move PS4 forward. The same thing with Microsoft, they had to move their Xbox One ecosystem forward. There was no way they, either company at this point could dump it with them making digital purchases so important. So that brings me to my point now of why they would be trying to do it is the PS3 was their first console that had the ability to buy stuff digitally. You can't have people spend all this money on digital games and then not give them a way forward to play them. So I think that it's a real possibility that we really could see Sony finally break on the backwards compatibility. There are a few other notes too that I took, well, they were probably sour about it. One is the PlayStation Classic. That thing completely flopped. Again, that was kind of Sony's fault for the games they put up there. And then in the US market, they had like European versions of some games that didn't run at the same frame rate. And then also PlayStation Now hasn't really been that successful. Like they had a head start on streaming and that was kind of their answer to backwards compatibility, putting the older games on a streaming service and that kind of flopped. So I think that kind of furthered their position on not wanting to do it. But now I think they're getting to a point where they have to. I think if they make this announcement, you know, in the next month or so, they're shutting down the PS3 servers. It also has to be accompanied with an announcement that they're working on backwards compatibility for PS3 games. Because if not, the backlash might just be severe. But anyway, I'm done talking about Sony for today, but this is a PlayStation week. I know I've been Apple-tastic lately, but I'm taking a break, so I'll be back on Wednesday with another PlayStation-related video. And you'll probably never guess what it is. You'll probably easily guess what it is, or if it's not the first guess, it'll be the second guess. But I'll be back on Wednesday with more PlayStation-related content. But if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and always do at least two things at the same time.